Dun, 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 dun. Ta-da! The butter cutter. I have been waiting for this prop for a while, but I haven't had time to actually go out and actually get them and scour the place finding some. Uh, it's just been too busy lately. But this is an extremely, extremely interesting prop to me because it seems like it's an attempt at replacing the HQ 5x4x3. And that is a great thing because this prop, the 5x4x3, is extremely old by now. It's like two and a half years old or something. All right, so let's start out by looking at the actual shape of the blade. So if you look at the shape of the blade, it's very, very, very similar to the 5x4x3. What they have done is they've made the trailing edge completely straight and they've given it a slightly backwards uh, sweep. So the blade is slightly backwards swept. They've also added some material in front of the blade so that they can add a more aggressive scoop in the middle of the blade. So let's look at the 5x4x3 and how it generally works, or how props work in general. When the prop starts spinning up, the first place it starts making any thrust is the prop tip, because it's moving the fastest. That that's, makes sense. It should make very clear sense to anybody, really. So once the prop starts spinning faster and faster, the blade area that st makes thrust starts move, spreading out through the, through the prop. Basically, no matter how fast the prop is spinning, the end of the blade is going to be going faster. So if the prop is not engineered properly, you're making more thrust at the ends and everything is wonky and nothing really works properly. So that's the complication in engineering a prop. And the 5x4x3, it, it looks like it's been somewhat engineered, but honestly, it doesn't look like a very, very uh, computer-designed prop so much because it, it, looks, it looks very basic, it looks like a very basic blade. So if I was to go about trying to improve this blade which I would love to have tried to do, I would go about it the same way as the butter cutter has done. I would start trying to add various kinds of scoops in the center of the blade because no matter how fast the prop is spinning, the center is making less thrust than the rest of it. And similar to like the racecraft blades and other blades that have come out recently, they all have pretty drastic scoops in the center because probably all these designers have realized that they need to do something about the center to make it make the thrust more even and create more thrust in general, use the torque of the motor and do something about making more thrust sooner as the prop spins up. What the racecraft props have done is that they've made the taper on the prop at the end very drastic so the end of the blade has very low drag and I think that once you get to a certain RPM the center of the prop starts taking over in terms of thrust creation and actual punch and movement and flying through the air. I'm not talking about pitch, advanced ratio or anything like that. I'm just talking about the prop design and just general the way I see it when I look at the prop in general. So now let's look at the butter cutter. What they've done is that they have added a pretty drastic scoop in the middle, and they're calling it a five pitch. I have no idea if it's five, five pitch or what, but it, it looks like a pretty, pretty significant scoop. The outer area of the prop, again, looks very similar to the 5x4x3, and I think one of the reasons why the 543 is so, feels so nice in the air is because at low speeds, it just, it just creates thrust in a way that's so creamy and nice and smooth. So I think that this butter cutter blade, it's also 4. Point, I think 4.3 or 4.4 grams, so it's a very good weight. It's a very, very good weight. Uh, I think the, the HQ blade is a 3.8 grams, so not too much more, but you're getting a lot more. We got more meaty motors. We can, we can actually spin a blade this heavy. And um, this blade can go two ways. It can either be fantastic and probably, well, it's, it's definitely going to be quicker than the 5.4.3 because of the scoop. Or it could feel kind of slippery in the air because the scoop kind of takes away from the low speed control of the blade because it doesn't do much at low speed. It doesn't, it doesn't work the same way as the 5.4.3 at, at lower speeds. So it can possibly take away from the control at low speed and it'll give you more top speed for taking away that control, which is how the 51.52 is. The 51.52, it compromises your low speed a little bit in order to give you better high speed and better control when you're moving quickly. This prop can do the same thing, except for the fact that the ends are not as drastic. They're more like the 5.4.3, so it might actually feel very similar at low speed while giving you good punch and top speed. I think that it's going to be... It's not going to be the least efficient prop. It's definitely not going to be an inefficient prop. It'll be an efficient prop. It, it won't pull as many amps as the 51.52 because it's not as, as meaty of a blade, blade, but it'll probably pull more amps than the 5.4.3 just because it is a more more aggressive blade than the 543. So I'm really excited to try this prop and uh, let's give it a try.
I'm surprised and very excited to say that I think that this is this is probably the most well-rounded prop there is. It has only one drawback, which is unfortunate, but one drawback which I'll get to. So it feels really, really similar to the 543 at low speed. It does feel slightly more slippery than the 543, but it has way more top end. So I would say I'm okay with compromising a little bit of low speed control for the top end. It's actually not that inefficient. It it only I only saw 120 amps on my OSD, which I usually see maxed out 139.9 on any prop that's aggressive. So it's not totally ultimately destroying your battery. And I would also say that I would give this prop a maximum all up weight recommendation of no more than 600 grams, preferably 575, 580 grams. I say that because when I added this camera on top, I was around that weight and it felt good in the air, but I would prefer it to be just slightly lighter. That's kind of my flying style. Anyways, the prop feels really good, really, really surprisingly good. And uh, there's one main drawback, which is really unfortunate, really, really unfortunate, but it's not terrible. The durability of the prop. So this is one I crashed. And the prop is actually durable in the air. You can see they're very dirty and I have uh, chopped up some branches. And when you're flying, it feels fine and you can chop through branches, no problem. They don't bend, nothing happens. But if you do hit a branch and you do bend the blade, it's unrecoverable. You cannot bend it back and it bends fairly easily. And it, it bends right here at the hub. I've, I've bent like three or four of them by now. And uh, it really, it bends right there at the hub. And if you try to bend it back, you feel like the plastic is significantly weaker. You can bend it back, but I wouldn't recommend flying it. You're, because the way it bends, it bends at an oblique angle, you can never get it back into alignment in order for it to be balanced. I also unfortunately found that the prop is not perfectly balanced. There are better balanced props. I think the Doll 543 is actually better balanced than this prop. I don't know what they could do about the durability. I think, I mean, it is a polycarbonate and I think that the blade, the, the general blade shape is like a folded piece of paper, which I think just generally doesn't have the best durability in terms of resistance to movement. I mean, the resistance to flexure. The 543 is more of a flat blade coming straight out and then it twists and turns and those various things. So you can bend it back pretty easily, at least the doll version or the various other versions, not the HQ version. So the other unfortunate thing is that if they're not gonna be that durable, they can get pretty expensive to use because I think they're a dollar a blade and one little, I mean, I, I landed on one blade and it bent like this. So that's kind of unfortunate. Don't forget to floss. <laughs>